A lot of people have asked to see the inside of our RV. Um, they've watched us travel around the country um, and seen our adventures, um, but have never seen the inside, which was not intentional. We just forgot and didn't realize that we didn't show it off. And we're really excited about it and we love it. Um, so I'll give you a little tour. Um, first, this is a Thor Challenger 37 KT Class A motorhome. Uh, Class A motorhomes are the largest uh, type of RV uh, that you can purchase. They are uh, motorized, they have an actual you know, truck engine and they drive themselves as opposed to like a, a fifth wheel or a trailer that is pulled behind another vehicle. So this guy drives on its own. It's 39 feet long, um, which in the world of RVs is pretty long. Um, a lot of people thought we were crazy for buying, you know, RV people especially thought we were crazy for buying such a large RV for our first RV, but people have to realize we're living in it. We're full-time RVers. This is our home. Um, and so in order to uh, function and have enough space and get along and that kind of stuff, um, we needed something that was big enough. Um, the other thing about this RV is, um, in particular, we chose this model because of its floor plan. Um, the inside here is referred to as the house of an RV. The entire RV is considered a coach. So if you go to a dealership or talk to an RVer, um, they'll refer to this entire structure, this entire item, this thing um, as a coach. But the inside here is the house, that's the living portion. And then the front back here where you see um, the cab or the driving portion is referred to as the chassis. Um, so the coach, uh, this house is exactly the floor plan we're looking for. It literally is like a home. It's divided into three sections, a living room, a kitchen, and the bedroom. Um, a lot of RVs um, kind of have everything mixed together. You know, your TV is across from your dining room table and, you know, the, the couch faces the bathroom and it just it wasn't what we wanted and because we're living in it full time we looked at many 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 rvs and settled on this one that we really really fell in love with it is used um but it's large it has the perfect floor plan and it was a super great deal so we went with it and this is what we picked um so anyway i'm gonna turn around and kind of give you a little tour um like i said it's 39 feet long so it has more than enough space it has three slides um slides are these rooms that actually project out or move out to expand the size of the RV so that it becomes larger, the living space is larger. And without these slides, it would not be livable in here, it would be way too cramped, um, and it makes this RV uh, quite large, a good amount of space once you have the slides out. The slides come in while you drive, so you can't obviously drive down the road with the slides out um, because you've probably seen some pictures of the outside of our RV um, that show you know, the slides extended. It's not drivable like that. You have to pull them in when you drive and then you put them back out when you get to where you're going. All right. So this is our office area. Um, they have, we have these two captain chairs in the front. Um, you notice that they do turn. Um, there's a little table, this table can, we can put it up when we're stopped at location. To keep, we can't drive with it there, so before we drive, we have to take it down. Um, but the chairs can turn. Um, you know, this is useful if we have company over, it's extra seating. Um, you can see the other chair, th this is Greg's workstation here. Um, in the driver's side and then mine is the passenger side. My computers are put away right now because today is a travel day. So we're heading down to San Francisco in a little bit and so I have to pack up my computers and, and uh, put my workstation away. But normally you'd see that set up as well. And then of course we have the dashboard there which is actually where Cooter loves to sit while we're working. It's kind of cute other than the times that he wants to bark at anybody walking by. Um, you can see our Jeep out there. It's, um, we tow the Jeep with this thing. This is 39 feet long, um, but when the Jeep is hooked up, it's obviously significantly longer, so you can kind of get an appreciation of driving it. It's been a huge learning process for us. Um, one thing we were shocked about is when you buy one of these things, uh, the dealership hands you the keys and says, see you later, have fun. There's no training process, there's no classes, there's nothing, and when we actually looked for classes about how to drive RVs, they didn't exist, at least in Denver they didn't. So we have taught ourselves how to drive this thing, which we're actually doing pretty good, um, but we are over 50 feet long once the Jeep's attached, and so we have to be very mindful of you know turns, and we can't back up. In order to back up, we have to unhook the Jeep, and then we can back up. So it's, it's been a challenge, but we're, we're getting there. We're getting there. So the rest of um, the living room area, as I said, this is the living room area. It's the first section, um, and one of the reasons we bought this is because it had the very distinct house-type feel to it. Um, 
this is the first slide. Um, when this slide comes in, it comes in um, about to the edge of that chair there. So it moves all the way in. And then this um, couch slide here moves in as well. And so there's like this little walkway that's about the size of that stool there. Um, so this is the TV entertainment center. Um, we got a fireplace in this, which when we were looking at RVs, we thought that was a silly feature, but now that we own one, we love it. It's actually really cool, especially on cool in cool destinations and, and cool nights when we're hanging out watching TV. It's, uh, it's electric powered, it actually gives off heat, um, which is kind of nice because um, RV park electricity is free for the most part. All the parks we're at are free, so we can heat with uh, the electric heat and then we don't have to waste money on our propane. Um, and then this is uh, the couch slide. Um, and this is Cooter in his bed, um, in his snuggly spot. Um, so this uh, has lots of cabinets. You'll notice there's a lot of cabinets in here. There's tons and tons of place to store stuff. Um, so it's been easy to, it's, it's a little challenging because all of them are packed full, so I'm not going to open one because stuff will probably fall out, but for the most part there's enough room in this thing. Um, the hole underneath is considered a basement. Um, if we go outside, there's doors all the way that run on either side of the RV, and that's where you can, uh, we can store stuff, and it's full. <laughs> so we have everything we own in this thing, and it is, everything is somewhere. Um, so yeah, so that's the living room section. This couch, it's actually a love seat, but um, it's considered a couch, um, uh, folds out to a queen size bed. So if you have company over or our kids come to stay, that's where they'll get to camp out. Um, we'll open that up for them. Um, and then it has sliding doors. Um, so, oop. So it has the sliding doors, um, so you can pull it out and you know, there's two of them and they can come across and shut here, which they're kind of cool. Um, we don't, haven't used them yet because um, we, it's just us, so nobody's staying with us, but at least gives some privacy if somebody's in there or if Cooter's being obnoxious, then we can close those doors. Hi buddy. Yeah? Okay. So the next section is our front door and our entryway. Um, we've adapted uh, you know this to live in so there's a lot of hooks we've added to hang stuff um, I, we added this shoe rack down here because this was a what i like to call a shoe catastrophe down here where there's just shoes everywhere um, there's no real closet space to put shoes so we kind of did that um, we put coat hooks to hang our coats on more cabinets more cabinets this is our kitchen um, we have what's called a residential fridge, which basically it's a real fridge like you would have in your home. Um, the only difference is it's smaller, obviously, um, ours is, but it's big enough for what we need. So it, uh, it does okay. It's, it runs on electric. Um, the fridge is probably the one thing in the RV that sucks the most electricity. So if we're not plugged into what's called shore power, shore power is when you plug into the outlet at the RV park and get electricity from the RV park. If we're not plugged in and we're running on the house batteries or something like that, this thing sucks a ton of um, electricity. So we have to be kind of mindful of that. We actually don't run our house batteries. Um, house batteries are like giant car batteries. They're located underneath and they power the coach um, when you know no other electricity is available. And unfortunately the batteries only power like the lights um, and there, you know, things like that. And then if we turn on what's called an inverter, um, it allows the batteries to char to power the fridge and the microwave and things like that. But then the batteries last like only a couple hours and you have to recharge them and it's kind of a nightmare. So we're very careful not to have the batteries running if we can help it. So again, fridge stays cold um, when we're driving because when we're driving, there's no electricity to the house. So, you know, some people think that we're driving down the road, it must be powered by the engine. That's not the case, actually. The whole house is um, d dead to power, and so we latch the fridge shut, and then we can drive. And when we get to where we're going, even if it's, you know, eight hours later, it, it's still cold, and then we plug it into shore power and it turns back on again. Um, so, this is the whole kitchen section. Um, cooking area. Um, definitely uh, something we've had to adapt to is the small space. is not a ton of counter space in an RV. Um, the other thing you'll notice here is there's no stove. Um, there's a, a burner, a cooktop, um, three gas-powered cooktop burners. These panels come off. They go on when you're not using it just to give you more counter space. 
Um, but this thing here is our microwave convection oven combo, which is very common in RVs. They don't have stoves. They have this guy, which has actually been, uh, works pretty good. Um, I find that it cooks things faster. Um, it cooks things more evenly, but finding out like the cook times and things like that can be a challenge. Like I've burnt my share of muffins and such trying to learn how to use it, but Basically, it's a microwave, but it's got metal inside. It's got a rack, so you can use it like an oven, too. So that's that. Um, sink. Sink's full of stuff because we are traveling today, and we put all the things that could fall um, off the counters, we shove them in the sink so that they can be safe. You can see our printer on the floor. We make do with, you know, running our business, and so we have to have all our equipment, like printer and postage machine, um, kind of out everywhere. Um, this is another slide. This is a giant slide on this unit. It goes all the way the length of the dining room, all the way back there through our bedroom. This whole slide move it, moves out, and then we'll bring it back in before we drive. So it's enormous. Um, you'll notice there's my little TV up there. Sometimes I put that on while I'm um, cooking. Um, Keurig. This is our dining room table, which is something I really wanted. A lot of RVs come with what I refer to as the McDonald's booth. Um, it's basically a restaurant booth looking thing um, and I just found that that wasn't practical nor comfortable for what you know living in it day to day um, I wanted an actual table which this model came with and and there's two chairs on it But it actually opens up the leaf opens up on either side It moves out and there's actually two other chairs under our bed that we can put at the dining room table so um, if we have company or what have you um, All right, so that is the kitchen area now I'll um, show you the bathroom. Um, actually, before I show you the bathroom, I'll show you this control panel here. This is our control panel for everything. Um, they don't really tell you what to do with it, so we just started pushing buttons and figured it out on our own. This is our thermostat. Um, it has propane heat, and then it also has an electric air conditioner. There's two huge air conditioner units on the roof, one for this front part of the house, one for the bedroom. There's a separate thermostat back there, and the, um, the air conditioner units actually are what um, oftentimes if someone goes over a bridge that's too low or too short, um, they get ripped right off the roof. We're 13 feet 7 inches tall with the air condition unit, so we have to keep that in mind when we're planning a route that we don't go under any overpasses or tunnels or anything that are shorter than that. Most, pretty much every tunnel and bridge um, on main highways and roads are all designed for tractor trailer trucks, so we're safe. But sometimes if you get diverted off a little side road or something like that, you know, you have to be careful and watch what the footage is for um, the, the overpasses and tunnels. We did actually go through a tunnel in Oregon that was 14 feet, um, so that was a little nerve-wracking because we had very, very little inches to spare um, with our uh, AC units, but we, we made out okay. This is probably the most important button here. Uh, these buttons bring in the slides. Um, this is our hot water heater. We can electric gas to turn on the hot, hot water. Um, this is the leveler, um, the level test. And so what this does is it tells us the levels of all of our important um, things. So this is our batteries. So they're fully charged. They're rechargeable, so that's awesome. Um, this is our gas. Um, we're gonna need to get propane where we go next because that's, that's about a third full. Um, Fresh water is when you use your storage tank on the RV. That's for dry camping or boondocking when you're not hooked up at an RV park. You have, we have a 100 gallon tank underneath that we can use to use water, um, but we don't have it full right now just because we're not dry camping right now. Uh, this is the gray tank and the black tank. Gray water is like your shower, your sink water. These are your storage tanks for your wastewater. Um, black tank is the toilet. Um, so you can see um, they're not, we just dumped them so they're pretty empty. Um, but that's a whole fun thing. That's probably another entire video. Um, we've the septic in the sewer has been a learning process as well. It's pretty crazy. Um, but we have a single bathroom. Um, this is our RV toilet, and you can see it's miniaturized versus you know a regular household toilet. Um, we have our counter storage, our sink. Um, we have a stand-up shower. Let me come in over here so you can see. Um, so we have a stand-up shower in there, which is actually pretty, you know, well uh, sized for us. It, it makes do. Um, more storage, storage and cabinets. Um, the toilet again, 
probably when we do a sewer video, <laughs> we'll talk about the toilet because an RV toilet is very different from a home toilet. So living here full time, it's definitely been something we've had to uh, learn about and deal with and how to manage it, that. But we figured it out, so it's all good. So we got it now. And then from the bathroom, we have a walkthrough bathroom, so you can come right into our bedroom. This is the master bedroom here. Um, and we have our TV. Um, it's, it's really nice. This is probably one of my favorite spots in the RV, just because it's super comfortable. We have our king size bed, which is something also that we really wanted. Most of the smaller RVs came with only queen size beds, and because we have Cootie, who thinks he's another human, um, it's like having three people in the bed, and so the the king size bed is awesome. Plus, it's the most comfortable bed I think I've ever owned. I know Greg likes it too. Um, we were surprised. We thought we were going to have to buy a fancy mattress to make it comfortable for full time living, and that's not the case. It's actually super comfortable, better than our um, other ones. So, we have a lot of mirrors. Um, these are all of our cabinets. You know, these units here, these doors are our closet, so to speak. Closet. Um, but they're pretty short, as you can see. They hang our items in them, but that's about it. Um, and so, yeah. And then the other good feature about the bed is that it actually lifts up and there's all storage underneath. There's no box spring, which is kind of crazy, but again, it's super comfortable. So it uh, serves our purpose. And so we come back out here. So that's the loop. You can see the whole house area here. Um, so that's our RV. So I hope you enjoyed the tour. And I'm sure you'll see you know, much more of it as we get further on the road.